grace and peace be with you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My beloved, perhaps the theme for this scripture text for today is more like a question. A question about what you care about. I think often when we're confronted in life about situations that there's really only two choices. And I love telling my teenage children this, and I'm certain that they appreciate every time I do this. Because I tell them there's only two choices. The first choice is the correct choice, which is the way I would choose, because it must be the correct choice. And the second is the way they would choose, because typically that choice may lead to more trouble and more anxiety, and perhaps more choices that are poor choices. It's interesting, as we try to understand the scripture text for today, we think, I think we should go back and look at some of the highlights of the entire chapter of 21. Matthew 21 tells us how Jesus had his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, riding on a colt. And all the crowds came out and praised him, this is the son of David, in fulfillment of their hopes and the prophecies and their dreams. This was the one who came in the name of the Lord, and this would now usher in a new kingdom, a new era. And soon after that, Jesus goes into the temple, and he confronts the money changers there, and reclaims the temple for God. Later, he continues to demonstrate his ministry of healing, and he continues to show his authority not only over the crowds, and not only over the institutes of authority, but even over nature itself, where we see the withering of the fig tree. Is it any wonder, after all this demonstration of power through our Lord and Savior, that the opening of our scripture begins with such a question? When he entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him, and as he was teaching, they said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? You see, the crowds were absolutely enthralled with Christ, at least for a time. Because they saw in him a way that there was confrontation to establish a boldness, an excitement about this that was just astonishing. And certainly the religious leaders were wondering to question his authority. But you know, they couldn't even answer the question. Jesus asked about John the Baptist. And maybe this reflects a little about our current society. How it's difficult to give the right answer and make the right choice. How people in authority, political leaders, spiritual leaders, how they need to be encouraged to make the right decisions. And how we must pray for all people that they can do so. Nevertheless, the challenge for our passage today is almost an extension of what we heard last weekend. The parable about the laborers in the field where they would develop their gifts to serve those in need. To seek, or do we seek honor for ourselves and put ourselves first? And hence Jesus tells another parable. This parable helps us to differ Jesus wants the religious leaders and us to try to decide between these two sons. For both of them, somewhat seen as being simple, which would be more likely redeemed by his father? For we see in light of that choice that redemption and the forgiveness is given to the one that first disobeys, but is not available to the second which mocks and continues to mock his father when he continues to disobey and not listen to his father. See, the first son changed. He changed his mind and he went. And maybe when we look at the Greek of the text, it might be easier for us to see a little bit different translation. Translation would be later changed what he cared about and went. You see, the son said no to his father. But maybe he really cared about his self, about his own comfort, about his own way of living. 
And then later he changed his heart and cared and chose about rather to follow his father and go into the vineyard and work for him. At the heart of the passage is a simple question. What do you care about? What do I care about? Are we like the religious leaders that Jesus is talking to that we need to somehow maintain a reputation? Or is the primary concern that we honor the Father God who asks us to work for Him, to go out and do His mission in His kingdom? And if our primary focus is to go and serve in God's mission, perhaps it's going to ask us to get a little bit outside of our comfort zone and respond to the love that He has showered on us to reflect that love to others in need. You see, friends, the religious leaders to whom Jesus was speaking to were still locked in that decision to say no to the Christ. And until they would change their concern, then there's no hope for them. Whereas the sinners and those who would be marginalized by society, they turn their no into a yes to Christ. And what about us? Are we perhaps too afraid to say yes because of our past and what we've done? Or maybe we're too ashamed of our current circumstances to say yes. Or maybe we're like many others that we've heard where they say, you know, I'm 80% right and God knows my heart and I try. Don't we get some credit for just a little bit of effort? You see, friend, God just wants you to say yes, to open up your heart so that you can experience His love and mercy and peace and joy and be a reflection of that to others. Isn't it wonderful? And when we think about authority, or we heard that in our readings today, could it not be that 99% of the authority of things that are over us those things which we allow or enable to be over us. What do I mean by this? Let's think about a colleague who slighted us. Or what about a child who disappointed us? Or about a parent or a spouse who somehow let us down? Friends, are we still remembering that and feeling angry about that or disappointed or upset about that? And have we decided to dwell on that and let that event or that person continuously influence how we're going to live the day. Oh, we have been victimized, but it's our choice to live like a victim or not. And let us think about this parable about the two sons. Is it a parable about authority? I don't think it really looks like. I think what the parable is asking us about whose authority we are going to follow. You see, because one son sets out and he says, I will go, but he doesn't follow through. And the focus of our text today is on the one son who says he will not. But later, he goes out, even though he may be motivated by some other circumstances. Maybe he felt committed that he had to do something else and let his father know. Or maybe he felt that there were some prior obligations. Or maybe he was just annoyed by his father who was continuously asking him to go out and work in the vineyard. Or maybe he nursed a grudge. Maybe he thought, well, why isn't my father at my side working with me? Or maybe the son's excuses were those things that we're thinking about or dwelling on now. You see, the son later recognizes that it's still open. The chance is still open for him to listen to his father and to obey his request. And by doing so, he proves that he is faithful, that he lives into the father's hopes and has for him. You see, Jesus is inviting. He's inviting us to be open to the future, not one dominated by oppression or arguments but one that's open to the movement of the Holy Spirit to change our hearts 
and accept his invitation. But you see, those who were like the religious authorities of antiquity, they were too vested in all those things that they had done that gave them their identity, for they could not let those things go. But those who were the down and out, those who had done things that also made their identity, they recognized that there's no life in those choices. And so they changed their concern about what they cared about and responded to God's love and held his promises close. And there's one more thing, that those promises are available to us today. That no matter what we have done or what we have had done to us, there's still the future that's open. And no matter how much hurt we have experienced or how much hurt we have done, that the past is in the past. And it shouldn't determine what we are going to do today. For friends, the parable of the two sons is helping us to focus that when we feel puffed up, and when the times that we don't recognize that John's baptism was from God, and then we're in circumstances when we're shamed by common people who we didn't think deserved respect, but teach us the simple lessons in life to love and honor others. You see, there's many take-home messages for our scripture today. One, the parable itself talks about two types of people. The type of person who proves better than he promises. That's the first son. Or the type of person who promises better than he proves. That's the second son. Secondly, it tells us that all types of people have the same father. And isn't that comforting that we know that this father who showers blessings on us all are the ones that we can receive. And it's the same Father that gives us the same obligation to all people that we can follow. Third, it's about going into the vineyards. It's about being obedient for, we hear, Son, go today to work in the vineyard. Because the night will come when we don't have the chance to work. Are we to sit idly by? You know, friends, it's never too late to turn to Christ, and it's never too early. Fourth, the son's answer to the father is so crisp and clear, so flat and plain, I will not. Can we see in that statement the truly corrupt nature we have when we say, I will not in the face of the commands of our father, such impudent children, such stiff-heartedness, that there can't be any blush in what we do. For there doesn't seem to be any modesty left when we reply quickly, I will not. We might ask, did any of the sons do the father's will? In one case, the son was rude. And in the other, he was false. And when we think about such exercises that we as parents or as brothers and sisters in a family Oh, how we have such adorable children and brothers and sisters who we want to love and need to be loved, but they're just so unlovable. Every day is a challenge for us to live with grace and mercy and wisdom so that we can choose the best. The question for us is, who is the better of the two? Well, it's the first, because his actions were better than his words. And his ending is better than his beginning. Our Old Testament also points us to a message about our gospel text. For in Ezekiel, we learn that the sinner who turns from his wickedness will be pardoned. And we are warned that the righteous man who turns from his righteousness will be rejected. The seventh point of, about our message today is that it's a continuation, really, of last weekend. To go and work in the vineyard. The parable is the same imagery about these laborers who go out. But this weekend we hear that we are called sons. We are not hired help. 
Jesus wants us to know that we are all welcomed. Pharisees and Republicans the same, publicans the same, that even though we are capricious, even though that we are different, even though we look around and we're aware that we are different people, different individuals, that it is this same God who promises the same truth, that we are to be welcomed as children of God. And what is the application for us today? Well, see, the primary scope of the parable is to show how some people who never thought about the Messiah, who started to entertain the doctrine and then submitted to the, discip the discipline of what John the Baptist was preaching, the forerunner of Jesus. It isn't about comparing us about priests and about those expectations about the Messiah, but yet did not believe in John the Baptist or Christ. The gospel text is written for us today. For all who sometimes are disobedient, and maybe for some long time now, these children of disobedient, we are like the first son. But yet how rich it is that when we hear the gospel and we can turn about what we are concerned about and live to the promises and glories of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and be obedient in faith. You see, friends, be a blessing. Go out and give them heaven, folks. Remember to practice your social witnessing. And all God's people said,